Salman Hikes, the creator of Docker, wrote, if Wassum and Wasi existed in 2008, we wouldn't have needed to create Docker. That's how important it is. WebAssembly on the server is the future of computing. Can you imagine that, right? We wouldn't even need Docker. That entire ecosystem could just go away if we had these things back then. All right, how's it going, everyone? So yeah, I'll be talking about creating a Wasm-powered plugin system for your apps using the power of Xism. So, CM Griffin on all socials, you can use that uh, QR code to get to my link tree. It's a custom-made one, not actually a link tree. I've been a software dev for around 10 years. Uh, I'm a, currently a developer advocate at Gitkraken. It's my first time as a dev advocate, so I'm figuring it out still. I do stream on Twitch five days a week, and I'm a snowboarder. Pretty much at any given moment, I'd rather be snowboarding. So let's actually get to it. What is Wasm? Wasm is WebAssembly. It's a low-level assembly-like language with compact binary format that runs with near-native performance. And yes, I just copied and pasted that from the MDN. But realistically, it's a binary format that you compile to that runs in anywhere that has a runtime for it. So that means that you can write your Rust code or Go code and consume it into something like the browser. The history of Wasm is actually a lot longer than a lot of people think, and it goes all the way back to 2011. And if I had more time, I'd talk about every bullet point here, but I just have to skip over it. Popular usage of it, right? If you're using Figma, you've used it before. If you're using CapCut, 1Password, Google Earth, uBlock Origin, and LeechS, they all use Wasm in some way in the browser, usually. Now, running Wasm in all modern browsers works, so that means Chrome, that means Firefox, that means Opera, and Safari, uh, Edge even, but not Internet Explorer 11. Hopefully you don't have to target that. If you do, I'm sorry. Now, when we talk about Wasm, we also have to talk about WASI, which is the WebAssembly system interface. It was designed by Mozilla, and it provides POSIX-like features like the file system or networking, pretty much things that like, you would have to compile for when you're making binary applications. So if you needed to make something that did networking, you would have to actually write it for Windows, for Mac, for Linux. Instead, Wasm and Wasi abstract that away from you, so that makes it a lot more portable. And when we combine Wasm and Wasi, we get a lot of power. Salman Hikes, the creator of Docker, wrote, if Wasm and Wasi existed in 2008, we wouldn't have needed to create Docker. That's how important it is. WebAssembly on the server is the future of computing. Can you imagine that, right? We wouldn't even need Docker. That entire ecosystem could just go away if we had these things back then. So running Wasm outside the browser, you actually just need a runtime, but having one of these SDKs like Xism, Wasm Time, Spin, or Wasmer make it a lot easier to work with. They do some of the heavy lifting of wiring things up for you. Today, I'm talking about Xism specifically. It's a plugin system for everyone. It's built by Dilibso, it's BSD licensed, and that is the Rust that he mentioned. It's written in Rust. Uh, if you want to actually like, get into it, let's talk about some concepts for Xism. So you can actually have your host, which is your application, and they have SDKs that you'll bring in, and it supports a lot of languages. So your applications can bring in plugins from a whole bunch of different languages as well. But yes, you're probably supported at least at the host level. For the plugin level, when you're going to build a plugin, you're going to have a PDK. This is another thing that Xism provides you. It's a plugin development kit. And right now there's only eight languages supported, but there's possibly more because it's open source. So if you don't see your language here, you can always get cracking on it and have fun with it. When we talk about actually doing this communication between the plugin and the host, we have two types of communication there. And the default is your host will invoke a function that your plugin exposes. The other way is that your host can expose a function for plugins to call. And that may be really useful for hiding away like API keys or APIs that you don't necessarily want people to have direct access to. When we kind of think about that communication, we got to think about security and safety. So the host and the plugin actually run in their own separate memory spaces. Xism creates its own separate memory space for the communication layer between them as well. So basically what that means is because they're completely separated, when you want to pass an object between them, you're going to have to serialize that into some format that is broadly acceptable between languages. They recommend JSON, but you could use MessagePack or Protobuf or all sorts of other things. And, you know, primitive values like strings and numbers, those just pass by it anyway. So why am I talking about Xism? Well, 
I work at Gitkraken, and I'm a developer advocate, and I think developers really want to like extend our application in a cool and special way. And Gitkraken, if you're unaware, is a we have a desktop client that is a Git GUI that helps you do some very complicated things with Git, makes it a lot simpler. We also have a CLI tool. Uh, we have Git Lens in VS Code, which is TypeScript as well. The CLI tool is Go. The JetBrains plugin is Java and Gradle, and basically. You know, the, Jet, the JetBrains plugin isn't actually available yet, but we are working on it. So when we want to support all of these languages, it would be nice to have something that is already like consistent with that process. So when we are implementing it into our applications, that process would be consistent for our developers, but it would also be consistent for people building plugins as well. And also think about maybe the compatibility of it. What if you could write one plugin that works for all of these things? That'd be really cool. So now let's think about like when you're building a plugin system for your applications, what are some considerations? I'm going to use Gitkraken as an example for it. So maybe we would expose some host events like Git events, like commit and push, file events like creating and deleting files, or maybe even merging a pull request on GitHub. We could expose that out to plugins nice and easy with just a clean eventing system. We could also export functions that use user credentials or things like that that you don't necessarily want to pass directly to a plugin for security reasons. We could expose API data, data that we don't want to make public yet. That's a nice uh, you know, way to do that. But then what about maybe doing UI integration? How would you do that? So we currently support GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, Azure DevOps, uh, and yeah, that's that. Yep. So basically, what if we wanted to add Gitty or Codeberg? Right? We do get requests for it, but we don't have enough users that actually would justify us building that. So instead, with plugin system, we could let users build that for us, and they can be on the hook for maintaining it. What about task management tools? So we support GitHub, GitLab, Trello, Jira, Azure DevOps. If you look at this image, it might be a bit small. We don't even see Trello in that list because it's already getting so long. So as we add all these things, like if we wanted to support linear or U-Track, that list would get unwieldy. And instead, users could pick and choose what they want to see in the UI so we can be a little less cluttered. Another thing we might do is maybe theming, right? How many people actually would want to maintain an entire library of themes themselves? Not a great idea, right? We only support basically two themes, and that's already too much for us. So instead, we can have users do their own theming, and then it's a little more fun. It's more customizable and more personable. And then finally, yes, as we add more things to this UI, it is getting cluttered. So instead, users could pick and choose what they're enabling within your applications. And you can kind of like get rid of that cognitive overload. So here's some things that you might not think about when you're building one of these systems, right? Discoverability. How do users find it, right? How do they update their plugins, right? You would have to have a hosted marketplace of some kind. There would be a review process, user feedback and reviews, version checking and distribution. All of this is stuff that you might not think about ahead of time, but is going to be actually a lot harder than just building the plugin system in the first place. So make sure that you're accounting for that and thinking about it when you're doing it. And then you have a better experience for your users to install plugins. What about documentation? Good docs are hard. Xism docs handle the basics of a plugin system, but what about the events and things that we would do in Git Kraken? That would be a lot harder to you know, document and keep up to date and make sure that our examples are right. So we'd have to host it somewhere. We'd have to keep them up to date. We'd have to have example code. And we'd maybe even want to internationalize it. This is all work that you have to do. So just because there's a plugin system available with Xtism doesn't mean that it's all solved for you. And when I think about a real world example of a plugin system, maybe take notes from WordPress. It is probably the largest plugin system in the world. Uh, there's also Figma. They have a great plugin system too. But the idea is try and take notes from people who have solved these problems for you. So I know I went through things a bit quick. I wanted to make sure I didn't go over time. If you do have questions, uh, feel free to ask me afterwards or in the Discord. And I'd love to chat more about Wasm and plugins and all sorts of stuff. Thanks. OK, uh, first question. Can you elaborate on why you wouldn't need Docker if we had Wasm back in 2008? So basically, Wasm can act as this broadly compatible system. And Docker is already trying to abstract out the underlying OS. Wasi is doing that same thing. So instead, people could focus on runtimes that run the Wasm instead of having to build out all the, the tooling in the Docker community. 
What would you say to someone that doesn't know much about WASM on where to start? Um, I would say try and find some of these tools like XSYSM or other just SDKs in general, and then you can kind of dig in deeper later uh, because they can solve a lot of the like the basic problems for you. And then you can just get up and running and building something and that'll keep you motivated. Yeah. And related to that, do you think that there's anything currently lacking from XTism? Um, I definitely did run into some implementation details and things that could have been better about the experience, uh, especially in like a sandboxed environment like VS Code. But the creators are really like open to uh, feedback and they have a great Discord channel to chat with them about. Like, yeah, XTism is really well maintained, I think. Nice. And we are out of time. So speaking of great Discord channels, please check out Chris's Discord channel and continue the conversation there. Thank you, Chris. Thanks.